Welcome everyone. Welcome to our class, Preschool Beyond the ABCs. I am so excited to be your facilitator tonight. I am a specialist for Duval County Public Schools. So I will go ahead and share my screen with you. Tonight, we're gonna focus on reading and tools to support preschoolers. The big six, these are the topics that we'll cover. Oral language, phonological awareness, phonics, fluency, vocabulary, and comprehension. Or language. If you look at these kids right now, you see them, they are talking. When we're saying oral language, they're talking, they're having a conversation. This is what we want your preschooler to be able to do is communicate. One thing that they will learn when they come to school, they will learn to be very social. And social meaning that if they're shy at home, once they come to school, they get out of that little shell and they start communicating with their friends. Once they learn how to talk in an oral language, that helps to build their reading skills. Oral language is the ability to speak and listen. The development of thinking and reading abilities is closely linked to development of oral language. Ways to support preschoolers with oral language. Open-ended questions. You want your questions not to be a yes and no. You want them to where they have to think about what it is they're saying or what it is that they learned and be able to answer their question. Back and forth, meaningful conversation. Retelling a story. Can they tell you the beginning of the story, the middle of the story, and the ending of the story? Describing a picture, a person, or action. Dialogic reading. Can you read a story to your child and during the reading, have them share the reading with you and ask them questions? Later on, you will see a video that shows you how to do dialogic reading. Talking. Give your child the opportunity to talk, especially if you read a book to them, let them be able to have an open conversation with you. I will show you this video, which is um, the early literacy, the importance of oral language. Think about how much reading you do in a day. You read the newspaper, emails, street signs, and directions. Reading is critical to academic success, economic opportunities, and quality of life. Alarmingly, research has demonstrated that a first grader who is a poor reader at the end of the school year has an 88% chance of remaining a poor reader at the end of fourth grade. Subsequently, there is a 74% probability of a poor reader at the end of fourth grade remaining a poor reader throughout his or her academic career. That's why your role is so vital. You will help young learners get on the road to reading success. Welcome, my name is Vanessa. In three videos, you'll learn about three foundational literacy skills, oral language, phonological awareness, and letter recognition. Before we begin, make sure that you have downloaded the handout. Let's begin. There are two components of reading, decoding and language comprehension. Decoding is translating symbols on a page into words. In other words, to be skilled readers, students need to instantly recognize words. Language comprehension, which we'll refer to as oral language, is the focus of this video. Oral language is understanding language at a listening and speaking level. Now I'm going to introduce a few activities for developing oral language. The first activity is naming. Naming involves your students naming items related to different topics and categories. By naming items and categories, you help the students organize their language for better retrieval. You might have your students name fruits. For example, have them name fruits that are red, fruits that are green, and fruits that are yellow. Your students could name fruits that are big and round, and fruits that are small and round. You want to keep the naming brisk. If your students can't name many items in a category, you name some items and have them repeat as many as they can remember. Choose a topic for naming that coordinates with the book you're reading with your students. 
Let's name some berries. Raspberry, blueberry, um, poisonberry. Good job. Let's name some melons. Watermelon, um, cantaloupe. Honeydew? Honeydew, yeah. I'm going to say a sentence and I want you to repeat it after me. An apple is red and a plum is purple. An apple is red and a plum is purple. Good. Now you try a sentence. An orange is orange and a apple is red. Good job. Another activity that fills oral language is dialogic reading. Dialogic reading means that as you read to a student, you want to have discussions or dialogues with him or her. You do this by asking your students simple questions and by adding information to their responses. You can use dialogic reading as you read books with your students. Dialogic reading looks like this. Do you know what this book is about? A bug. A bug? Yeah, actually a caterpillar. Have you ever heard of a caterpillar? Mm-hmm. What is it? It's a bug that's hairy. You're right, it's hairy and it's really long. And it has six feet and um, 12 eyes. Well, based on what you know about insects, what do you think this caterpillar might eat? Leaves. Maybe some leaves. So he might see other things other than leaves that he wants to eat. What else do you think he might eat besides leaves? Like berries. Maybe some berries, too. So so what do you think this story is about, or what did you learn about it? Um, It's hairy, it's long, it has six legs and 12 eyes. All right, good job. Yes, success. Here's a mnemonic to help you remember the steps. Peer, P-E-E-R. P is for prompt. E is for evaluate. The second E is for extend. R is for repeat. Students in the early grades need a strong oral language base so they can understand the words they are reading. In short, the value of oral language development is priceless. Now, I believe a lot of us are doing this at home, especially if your child's teacher has assigned a 30 minute reading block every single night. So now you know that this is something you can do at home with your child, dialogic reading. So basically you read a book, you ask open-ended questions, you prompt your child to tell you what happened in the story. What's next? What did you learn? What did you see? You want them to be able to have this conversation with you because then if they can talk and um, let you know what it is that they've learned when they get ready to do their testing, when that I ready testing where they have to be able to comprehend what it is they read, this technique they've already learned when they're preschoolers. So this will help their reading skills so much better to be able to retain the information that they've learned. So the next thing that we're going to move on to is phonological awareness. Phonological awareness is the ability to segment and manipulate the sound of oral language encompassing a list of important sound related skills. Blending, putting words together and segmenting phonemes, which is sound. Onset, rhyme, blending and segmentation. Syllable blending and deletion sentence segmenting, alliteration, rhyming, sound and word discrimination. These are the skills that we want your child to be able to do once they're in school and they move up through the grade levels. We're gonna to touch base on um, these through more of the slides. Or blending, syllables. Say those syllables and have your, your child say the word. This. When you're doing syllables, the first thing that you can start with, because you are your child's first teacher, is their name. So my name is Talbert. So if you wanted your child to be able to say their name, Talbert, you would clap it out, Ta-bert, and you would ask them how many syllables. If their name was Melissa, Melissa, you ask them how many times did I clap for Melissa, Melissa. You clap three times. This is something that you can do at home with your child. Onset and rhyme. Say the onset, 
the rhyme and have your, your student put them together and say the word. So here's an example. P and pan, m and man. Real short, simple exercises to do. Phoneme by phoneme, sounds by sounds. Have your student put together the sound to make a word. Let's do the word cat, k at. So when we do in phonemes, we're only saying the sounds or language segmenting, counting the sounds. So say or clap the syllables in a word. Each syllable has a vowel and you drop your chin when you say them. M -l -s -a. We said it three times. The onset and rhyme. Say the word by the onset and the rhyme and count the parts. P and that's two times. Phonemes by phonemes, which is sound by sound, the word is cat, k at. You said three sounds. The easiest way when I was doing this in my preschool class, I always started with the kids with their names because I wanted them to learn their names. Once they learned their names, we went to the letters, then we went to the sounds, and then we went to writing. This is something that you can start doing at home. If you've already, already started it, you've already done it, wonderful. And if your child is older than this, then you can move on to even harder words, um, the spelling words that your teacher sends home as homework. Phonemic awareness examples. What is the first sound you hear in dog? Now, if we look at the word dog, d og. So the first sound you hear is a d. Which of these words begin with the same? Boy, bow, cup. When we're doing um, beginning the same, we wanna look for the ones that have the same beginning sound. B, boy, b, bow. Those all have the same beginning sounds. Now you want your child, if you wanted to try to see, do they understand what it is you're saying to them? Ask them the word that does not belong. Which word do you think does not belong? And if they can tell you cup, that way you know that they understand what it is you're asking them. Tell me each sound you hear in cat, k, at, cat. Say red, now say red without the er, and there you should be able to repeat ed. This is something that we do in our classrooms and we'll make a game out of it because sometimes it's a little hard. You have to teach your child to train them to use their ears to listen to what it is that you're saying and to listen for the sounds. R ed, take away er, there's ed. So they should be able to do that. Say pop and change the uh to a uh and say the new word, pop. Phoneme um, categorization, rhyming. One of my favorite things to do with my kids and they love this. This is something that you can do at home. If you're doing reading with them, you can do rhyming words like pat, sat, mat, the word that does not go there, as you see, is pat, sat, pot. You do not want the word pot to be on there. Beginning consonants. Which two words begin with the same sound um, for the beginning consonants? House, happy, rabbit. If you look at them, you see house, happy, and rabbit. House and happy begin with H. So the word that does not belong would be the word rabbit. And then consonants, which two words end with the same sound? Sat, mat, car. Of course, you're looking at the A-T ending in sat, the A-T ending in mat. These are all games that you can play with church kids at home. Middle sounds, long vowels, which word does not have the same middle sound? This is something that we did see on um, for kindergarten. A lot of this was on their Flickr's test that you, they have to be able to tell the difference with long sounds and short sounds. So bait, late, like. You want the two with the eight at the end. Those are your long sounds because you can hear the A. Your middle sounds, which are your short vowels, which words does not have the same middle sounds. We have hop, mop, rip. So which one does not belong? It is going to be rip because hop and mop 
they both say ah. Middle sound constants as in kitten, lesson, happen. You are gonna look in the middle and see the double letters. In kitten, it's the double T. In lesson, it's the double S. And in happen, it's the double P's. Let's take a closer look. Phoneme manipulation. Initial sound substitution. Repeat the first sound in man. Oh, I'm replace the first sound in man with a P. So if we practice at home with your child, have them say man. Now say man with a P. They should say pan. So what I would do in my classroom, I would say, our word is man. Man says, mmm. We're going to take away the mmm, and we're going to put a p. Your new word is pan. Final sounds um, substitution. Repeat, replace the last sound in bad with g or a g. So bad, bad, d. We know that it ends with a d. So we're going to replace the d with a g. So the new word is bag. Vowel substitution, repeat, replace the middle sound in hat with a. Uh. The word is hat. The new word is hot. Syllable deletion, say noble without the no. They should be able to say able. Initial sound deletion, say sat without the s. They should say at. Final sound deletion, say make without ache, and it should be mm. Now, when we continue this, this is something that you can practice at home. Easy steps for you to do. We've already gone through some of these initial phonemes, which is we're doing the sounds. If we get, we say slip without the s, we have a lip. If we say nest without the t, you have nest. And we can continue all the way down to second phonemes in a blend deletion, which is just taking away one sound and seeing what their remaining um, word is. Ways to support your preschoolers with phonological awareness. Remember, we're thinking, when we think phonological awareness, we're thinking about the structure of words, which will help them become more focused with their reading. So we wanted them to be able to be good listeners. We want you to practice playing with words and sounds. We want you to practice clapping, switching syllables, using rhyming words, blending phonemes, deleting syllables, and phonemes. Remember, when I say phonemes, I am talking about the sounds. So let's look at a quick video that can teach you some strategies of how to help your child with phonological awareness. Phonological awareness, or PA, is an essential skill that helps children learning to read or write. Having good PA skills allows a child to play around with sounds and understand how they fit into words. Research has found that children with strong PA skills are going to have more success reading and spelling when they begin school. Phonological awareness skills include recognizing rhyming words. Does cat rhyme with shoe? No. Does cat rhyme with bat? Yes. Identifying sounds and words. What is the sound at the end of hat? T. Blending sounds to make words. What word do these sounds make? M, E, P, map. What sounds can you hear in the word moon? M, U, N. And finally, changing a single sound to make a different word. If you swap the S sound in sad with a D, what word does it make? Dead. Nursery rhymes or rhyming storybooks are a great way to develop a child's understanding of rhyming patterns. Dr. Seuss books are fantastic for this.
For example, this is an extract from Hop on Pop. Hop. Pop. We like to hop. We like to hop on pop. Driving in the car is a great chance to practice naming as many rhyming words as possible. For example, what rhymes with the word dog? Bog. Frog. Blog. Blocks are a great way to visually represent sounds and how they form words. Here are some examples of how you can use blocks to practice blending, segmenting and changing sounds. These sounds are p, uh, g. What word does that make? Pig. If this says pig, what is each sound? P, uh, g. If this word says pig, can you change it to dig? Well done, dig! Phonological awareness is an important pre-literacy skill. Simple rhyming and sound play games can significantly help to increase a child's phonological awareness. So these are games that you can do at home with your child. Or just think about the amount of time that you spend in the car, whether going to school, coming back from school, going to practice, um, going to the park. And while you're in the car, you can use oral language, you can use phonological awareness, you can have your car. I remember one thing that we used to do was um, as a kid when we we're driving in a car on the highway, we would look at the license plate and we would um, be able to, to tell what state the license was from. That is a form of reading. Your child is taking the time to read the different states and building their skills when it comes to reading. But you can also do the rhyming games with them. As you saw, what rhymes with hat, what rhymes with cat, what rhymes with pot, what rhymes with mop. Something easy to get their brains going, especially when they're going to school. And just to think of whatever lessons that they're gonna learn, they're already, you're already preparing them on the drive to school. So just think of simple games that you can do. Especially, like I said, with your name, their name, any other family members' names, you can do syllables really quick with them. If, um, if their name is Layton, what rhymes with Layton? Peyton. They can come up with something real quick, a nice, fun family game to do. Our next step is phonics. Phonics is the relationship between the letters of a written language and the sounds of spoken language. Phonics is the connection between graphemes letter, syllables, and sounds, which is the phonemes. Phonics should be linked to spelling and writing. When you think of phonics, think of letters. And if you look at the little boy in the picture, he is, this is probably what we call the ABC book. So he's not just seeing the picture of the dog. He's getting, he has the letter D, he's getting reinforcement of what the letter D is for dog. And then here is an actual picture of a dog so that he has a real life experience of what it is that the word is saying. If he does not know that word is dog, he can look at the picture and make a prediction of what the word is. Ways to support preschoolers with phonics. These are games that um, a lot of the preschool classrooms will play. Um, if you look at the kids right here with all the letters around their neck, they're doing their sight words. So they came together and they were doing the word like. So each child got a letter, they put it together and they made the word like. The one with the barn, the teacher made something real simple and easy that you can probably do at home. You can write it out yourself and draw a picture. And the paper clips are probably, or the clothespins are probably something they got from Walmart or the Dollar Tree. You put the letters in there, you show a picture, the picture is barn barn starts with a B and it makes the B sound. But they, she gave them three options. So they know it's not, if you look at barn and you say the word B, they know it's gonna be a B. Yes, it could be farm, but they're not showing everything. They're only showing one picture and the picture is a barn. Now, the other picture, holes or no holes. This is where the kids are learning to identify their um, uppercase and lowercase letters 
or letters that do have the holes and don't have the holes. This is another form of them help being able to sort. Um, the teacher on the right is teaching the kids how to write their letters. And most likely she is saying the letters, saying the sounds and telling them how to write the letters. So you could say something like big line down, straight across, across, anything that is that the kids can remember um, how to form their letters. So letter names is a way to do it. Long and short vowels, letter sounds, word families. When we say word families, we're talking about words that have the same ending sounds like hop, pop, mop, they all end in up, fog, frog, blog, they all have the go. Um, mat, pat, cat, rat, they all end the same in at. That's what we mean by word families. Vowel patterns, blends, and diagraphs. Um, blends, when we're talking about like the word frog, you can be able to separate the sounds out. We know fr for frog, but we can go f, er, uh, g, and you can break them down. Um, diagraphs mostly means like words like th th, or the ch ch. Those words all go together or sh, sh for shop. You would say that all in one. You want to go with s, you would say all together sh, op. Now, we're gonna do a video which shows you phonemic awareness and phonics, the difference between them. Phonemic awareness and phonics, what's the difference? Phonemic awareness teaches children to differentiate the sounds heard by the ear into their most basic components, such as demonstrated by the following child. Mm is for monkey, monkey starts with mm. This child is an example of having emergent phonemic awareness because he had re has recognized that the beginning sound of monkey is mm. Note that he does not say the letter M, but the sound mm. As he progresses, he will begin to hear more of the sounds that are present in the words that he hears. This is shown in the following example. Now, at, spells cat. This shows that he has progressed enough to be able to hear all three of the phonemes that are present in cat, namely the k, a, t sounds. In phonics, children do not associate only with the sounds, but also with the sound's graphical representation, called graphemes. The same child practicing phonics would sound more like this. M is for monkey, monkey starts with M. Or this. C A T spells cat. One of the bigger difficulties in phonics is that there are 44 phonemes, sounds, in the English language, but only 26 letters or graphemes. So some sounds are represented by multiple letters like T H to make the th sound. Once children learn to associate sounds and letters, they are able to move into reading. It also assists them to sound out words in writing and spelling. Remember, phonics is the letter, phonemic awareness is the sounds. Um, this is a skill that you want your child to be able to do because this also helps them to be able to sound out their words. And when they sound out their words, they're gonna be able to write it better. Um, this right here is what the sound box ideas are. The teacher will most likely give them a word and they have to sound the words, um, sound the letters out to make the words. Or she'll show them a letter and where is the sound? Especially if it was a word, then they have to figure out where the sound G came in at. It's a skill that seems like it's hard, but by the end of the school year, they have mastered this. <laughs> fluency. When you think of fluency, you wanna think of accuracy and speed. Fluency is the speed, accuracy, expressions that a person uses when reading a text because it is manifested Fluency involves a reader's ability to use multiple skills simultaneously. 
Fluency serves as the bridge between decoding and comprehension. You want your child to be able to look at a book and read the sentence without really making any mistakes. Um, yes, they can make mistakes, but they should be able to correct themselves at the same time. This skill will help them when they are testing um, with timing. So if they have to read a paragraph, they know the vocabulary, they know the words, they can just go ahead and go through it versus trying to like sound each and every word out. Ways to support your preschoolers with fluency. Puppet shows. Puppet shows are a great way to help them um, memorize a script, what they need to do. So normally you wouldn't have a script in front of you. If you have a puppet show and you get them line, how fast can they go through their lines? How accurate can they say what it is they need to do? Um, finger play. This is good for nursery rhymes. It is good for fairy tale stories. Um, songs, songs that they have to memorize, um, songs that they have to perform, any kind of songs that has a rhyme to it will, is really good for them to practice their fluency. Performing plays and retelling stories. Now, as a preschool teacher or ex-preschool teacher, retelling stories is the best skill for them to be able to learn how to comprehend things and to be able to move a little bit faster with their fluency. Like, I know the story, um, The Three Little Bears. Once the kids get the three little bears, they can be able to retell you over and over and over what happened in the story. And each time they retell you the story, they think of something else that might have happened that they forgot. So you want your child to be able to tell you um, beginning, the middle, and the end of a story. Vocabulary. It is always the best idea to build a strong vocabulary with your child. And that starts at home with things like them talking to you, oh, what's this? The door. What's this? The fridge. What's this? The TV. Or TV, television. Give them another word besides the basic word. Um, give them high fluency words to use. Car, automobile. When you build their vocabulary, this helps to build their reading skills. Vocabulary refers to the words we must know to communicate effectively. Vocabulary can be described as oral vocabulary or reading vocabulary. If you could talk to, I don't know if some of you guys ever go to um, take your kids on what they call it, um, play dates. And if you listen to how your child speaks and how their vocabulary is compared to another child, is your child vocabulary higher than your child or is it at the same level as their child or is it below? You wanna always make sure that you have your child has a strong vocabulary when they come to school because if their vocabulary is strong, their reading skills are gonna be higher because they can move on faster with their reading when it comes to fluency. Ways to support preschoolers with vocabulary. Of course, I always say it starts at home. Um, I know I see a lot of parents like to put their child's name in their bedroom, and that is the best thing that you can do. You put their name on the door, they know that's their name, that is their place. And if you, um, some people label the, the door, they label the closet, they label the window, they put words everywhere in their child's room, so that helps to build their vocabulary skills. If they're cleaning up, they have buckets with dolls, bucket with army men, bucket with ocean animals. Once they start seeing these words, at first they might not know what it is, but if you're telling them and giving them the tools and letting them know what these words are, that is building their vocabulary skills. Something as simple as when you're driving in the car and they see the, the arch or the M for McDonald's, they know that's McDonald's. They see, well, you will not believe how many kids can just point out Walmart by just looking at a picture, but because you have reinforced them with them that that W is for Walmart and they can sound it out. So ways to support preschoolers with vocabulary. Dialogic reading, which is the reading with open-ended questions where you do your 30 minute reading box with them every single night, but you're asking questions 
and you're prompting them to retell you what happened, what's next, what do you think? Let's make a prediction. You're prompting them to keep going, but you're not just doing yes and no. Acting out motions, um, using real items. So the best thing for that would be if you go to the grocery store and here's an egg. Where does an egg come from? The store. You don't want them to just say the store. An egg comes from a farm, egg comes from chickens. You want their vocabulary to be so strong that they can um, be able to articulate what it is they need to say. And once again, I said label items. Here is a refrigerator. Here's the word refrigerator. We put all your artwork, put all your pictures, put all your grades on the fridge. Anything that helps to build their vocabulary skills. Comprehension. Do they understand what it is that they just read or what it is that you read to them? Comprehension is the complex cognitive process involving the intentional interaction between readers and text to extract meaning. Simply put, is the act of understanding what you are reading. So when they read a story or you read it to them, this is where open-ended question comes. Do you understand what it is that you're reading? If they can um, master the skill of comprehension when they're at school, and once again, I don't reflect back to the reading test. They're taking a reading test and they have to read a paragraph and they start reading paragraphs at an early age um, where they're not having some a computer read it for them. The paragraph is up there and they have to be able to read it and comprehend what it is that they're reading. So you wanna start doing this at home. You show them, do a picture walk, open the book up. Let's make a prediction of what you think this book is about. Open up the book, look at all the pictures first, have your child make that prediction. Then you go read the story and then ask them questions. Did you comprehend what it is the story was about? So ways to support your preschoolers with comprehension. Questioning, conversation, prompting, retelling, writing, drawing, using visuals. Using visuals, which would like the, um, the finger play stuff or the puppets um, that you can use. Something simple as an art project that you guys make together and you can label it and put it somewhere where they can always go back to it. Um, writing and drawing, have them draw a picture and then on a nice little index card or you can write it on the picture. Um, this is Johnny playing in the playground. Um, he have them explain what their picture is and you'll be amazed. You see one thing on the page, but in their mind, it was something different. So what it is that they draw, you write it down for them or if they can write, have them write it down and let you know what it is that they did. How does writing support reading? Now, if you look at the little girl, this is the good morning um, message that her teacher has. And it looks like she's having good morning pre-K and she's writing the word friends. So she's learning how to sound the letters out to write the words friends. There's believe me, if she does this enough times, she'll be able to write the words friends, not just at school, but also at home. Um, if you look at I see a circle, they, this child was able to write a sentence with a picture already there, they could fill in the blank of what it is that they see. And these kids, um, are writing their letters. So they have a lion, a giraffe, a donkey, a tiger, a gorilla. Here's real life experience. They get to see what the real life animal looks like. They get to see what the letters look like and they know how to form and write it. How to prepare for a read aloud. So this is something that we do in the classroom daily. There's always a book. There's always something engaging for you kids to sit and listen to. Pre-read the story. You don't want to just open a book and read it and you don't have no prior knowledge of what it is about because kids like to let ask questions and you want to be able to provide them with the answers. Write about five high level questions. So high level questions. So if we talked about the three little pigs and you said, oh, what were they doing? They built a house. When you keep going, what kind of house? 
in its house of, of bricks. And then they, you just keep building on that. Keep going from one question to another. Identify challenging vocabulary. So you want words that um, go beyond it, like how I said TV, but then they know the other word is television. Add post-it notes to the books. So you wanna get yourself prepared. What did you think that they might ask you ahead of time? And just put the notes on there. Collect any pictures, puppets, or props. Anything that's gonna help you be expressive. You don't just want to sit there and just read a story. Um, the three little pigs were afraid of the bear. No, you want to be excited. You want to draw them in. It's Halloween time. Get a mask with a, a pig on it. Get a mask with a wolf on it. So when you're reading your story, your child can be one of the three little pigs. You can be the wolf and read your story, bring excitement to it. Because if they're excited, they're more drawn in and they're more willing to listen to the story and they're more able to hear the vocabulary words. They're more able to comprehend what it is that you're saying to them. Make reading exciting, make reading fun. What do these journal entries tell you? So when I look at this, first thing, of course, we see a picture of a butterfly. But if you look, she's also trying to write the word butterfly. And in her word, her mind, she is breaking down the sounds, butterfly. And this is how she figured how to spell it. Now, I know sometimes people look at, oh, she put the F the wrong way. That's okay. Um, we encourage writing and eventually she will correct herself with the way how the F is supposed to go. I like pizza. She sounded out the words, but she, uh, she forgot the E. She forgot the, uh, the double Zs for that. That's a skill that they will pick up later on. But if you look, she has her pizza. You know what it is that she's trying to say. Um, this is letter tracing. This is something that you can do. You grab a highlighter or a yellow crayon or orange crayon. Um, write all the letters down and have your child um, practice writing it. Wish, first start with pencil grip, how to hold a pencil, how to hold a um, crayon the proper way, how to hold it, and then move on to writing. And this is a skill that I was start with their name first because everybody's excited to learn their names. So I would write their names in a highlight and then I would have them go and trace it and practice this every day. And then after they practice highlighting, then I have them practice trying to write the letters underneath the highlight. Make learning fun. Keep it short and simple. Follow your child's lead. Where you feel like their level is at, their comfort level, keep them there. If you see that they are above that, then push them a little bit more. Don't compare. We all learn at different times and at different rates. Smile and stay positive. Um, whatever it is they do, whatever they draw, make such a big deal out about it that you've never seen anything like this before. It's the most beautiful picture on this world. It's the best handwriting you've ever seen. You've read this story so good. Make a big deal out of it because that is building um, their skills. It's making them happy. It's making them comfortable to come to you and more willing to share and more willing to invite you to come in and um, please read the story for me or please sit and draw a picture with me. And this is what you want your child to be um, positive and happy about learning to read, learning to go, being ready to go to school, being ready to do a homework. So time for a pot quiz. If you want to, you can write this in your, um, in your chat. So it says, clap the syllables in the word. Which one of the big six skills did we um, learn? Clap the syllables in elephant, elephant. Which one of the six did we learn this from? So if you said phonological awareness, you are right. Phonological awareness is where we learn how to clap out the syllables and count the syllables in the word elephant. Now, the next question, asking questions after reading a story. So asking questions after reading a story, which one of the big sixes did we learn this from? Is it comprehension or phonics? Those are your two choices. Comprehension. Okay, let's see if you are right. It is comprehension. What is table without 
the T or what is table without the T? Which one of the big six? Is it phonological awareness or is it oral language? Phonological awareness? Yes, it is. You are on a roll. This is the letter P. What sound does it make? Is it phonics or comprehension? What sound does it make? We have someone saying that it's phonics. Oh, good. A good job. That is right. It is phonics. A child using a complete complete sentences. Is it or language or phonological awareness? A child using a complete sentence. Is it or language or phonological awareness? Oral language. It is oral language. They are on it tonight. Yes, they are. Match the upper and lowercase letters. Upper and lowercase letters. Are we talking about phonemic awareness or are we talking about phonics? Match the upper and lowercase letters. One of our friends is saying phonemic. It is actually phonics because we're talking about letters. So remember letters has to do with phonics, but thank you for participating. So those are the it with the questions. It's time for some reflection. What have you been doing well? What are your aha note, um, noticing and what new strategies will you use? So what is it, if anybody wanted to share, have they been doing at home? Have they been doing um, dialogic reading? Have they been doing their 30 minute block reading with their kids? Have you been um, labeling around your house? Have you been um, using syllables? Have you been using rhyming words? Um, are you doing nursery rhymes at home? Are you in the car doing oral language? Rhyming words, good. So good, it is good to use rhyming. Rhyming is a great tool for reading, yes. Anybody else wanted to share? Or anything that you think you're gonna, um, 30 minutes reading, wonderful. Yes, hooked on phonics, great. Um, that is an awesome tool to use with your kids. And also thinking about other stuff is um, ABC Mouse is wonderful. Um, Star Falls, Star Falls has a great um, unit that helps with lessons with reading. So we have someone asking how we use phonemes. Okay, so using the phonemes is the breaking the sounds down. So like how I did cat and I went k at. It's just breaking the sounds down. So if you have a word, you want them to only use the sounds. So when the little boy was doing monkey and he said mm, for um, monkey, he didn't say the letter, he only said the sounds. So you want your child to focus only on the sounds. Like if her name was um, Sarah, you only want her to say S for Sarah. So to say the sound, not the letters. So those are little games that you can play at home with them. So we have someone writing uh, saying that they're a first time parent. We've done mm -hmm. nursery rhymes. We've practiced writing. He's having trouble focusing when it comes to the reading for 30 minutes. He's only four and has difficulty labeling. Okay, so four years old, the labeling it's for you to do. Um, and that's simple stuff with their shoes. Like this is where you put your shoes. You can just put the word shoe um, on the wall or if it does that in a closet, or this is where you put your toys, put the word toy. And sometimes the best thing you can do with the labeling at our age group is to take a picture of the object that you want them to learn. So if they're in their room and you want them to put their toys at a certain spot, you take a picture of the toys and the bucket, the toys in the bucket that you want, you put the word toys and the picture. So they have something to connect the word toys with. Um, that's a quick, easy way to do labeling. And it was another, it was another question, I missed it. I wanna thank you guys so much for taking your time to come to our course, um, Preschool Beyond the ABCs. Thank you so much for spending your night with me. I know it's a school night and you have to get your kids ready. So once again, thank you. And we'll see you at our next course.